Good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about my favorite film cameras and why I've chosen these cameras and why I've cut my collection down to just a few. But I'd love to know what you guys are shooting as well, so comment below and let me know. Without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start out with 35 millimeter and my go-to is right here, the Olympus OM4 Ti with a 35 millimeter F2 Zuko. This lens pretty much stays on this body all the time. It's been on here since 2020 and I don't see a reason to take it off because it is that good. I love the versatility, I love the compact nature, lightweight, incredibly accurate light meter. The spot metering system on this camera is absolutely incredible. So I use this camera for sort of one or two main reasons. One, it's just general purpose photography. I typically like to take it out when there's a family event or I'm hanging out with some friends. It's a nice laid back way to shoot some film. Uh, and the second is when I go out and I scout locations for bigger projects. And the reason why I like to use this camera when I'm scouting is because I like to know exactly how that film emulsion, whatever I'm going to be working the project around is going to react to certain lighting situations. So carrying this little beauty around is uh, is a lot of fun and it's a really easy way to just get out and get back to shooting. Oh, hello again. We've walked a little further down the path here and I've taken out my Yashica Mat 124G, which is one of my all time favorite medium format cameras. This is a TLR, which stands for twin lens reflex, which basically means you compose and focus out of this top lens and you actually make your image out of the bottom lens. Now this is a really great beginner camera because it's super easy to use. And obviously as you can see, I don't even have a camera strap on this. I'm just free handing it because it's super light and it's super compact literally about the size of my hand. Sometimes medium format cameras can get incredibly large, just like an RB67 or a Bronica GS1, or even a Pentax 6.7, those things are gigantic. So this is a really beautiful compromise, especially if you're somebody like me who's looking for convenience. Now, one of the things that I use this camera for most is basically general purpose photography when it comes to medium format. If I need some more resolution, more detail, I go with this camera. I almost always shoot black and white film with this camera. I just really love the way that this classic Yashica, cause this isn't a Zeiss lens, is it? No, it's not a Zeiss lens. Anyways, I really love the way that this Yashinon renders contrast. It is absolutely beautiful. It is tack sharp. And I just feel like it has a classic black and white feel to it. Easy to use, absolutely beautiful. Really easy to compose your images because the ground glass is huge and it's very, very bright. In fact, this is probably the brightest ground glass I've ever seen on a medium format camera, which makes it really super easy to compose. I feel like I'm talking to the camera like this. Hey. So we've walked around some of these trails, made our way to the river banks, and uh, now it's time to talk to you about probably my favorite medium format camera, the Mamiya 645J. The J stands for junior, but don't let that distract you because the only difference between this and its big brother, or I guess dad, dad? that its shutter speed is a maximum of 1 500th of a second rather than 1 1,000th of a second and I always struggle to say one one thousandth of a second. My favorite lens that stays on here almost all the time is the 55 millimeter F 2.8. I absolutely adore this lens. I love shooting wide with that 645 format. Uh, this lens is pretty sharp when you stop it down, which most lenses usually are, but the only drawback for many is the coma that this lens has. The more it gets away from the center, the more that the image starts to fall apart, starts to fall off, creates these sort of like swooping little blurry lines. Um, and to many people, that's sort of uh, a no-go. Not gonna buy it, big deal breaker. But for me, I think that little added character really adds a little extra intrigue and interest to these images. And uh, 
quite frankly, when you stop it down to f5.6 or f8, which is where I typically shoot this camera and shoot this lens, um, it's pretty darn sharp. I typically use this camera for documentation and you guys see that in a lot of my videos. I have a couple more videos coming up after this one where this camera is featured pretty heavily. Um, and I do shoot a lot of portraits with this lens. I shoot a lot of impromptu portraits of strangers. I don't shoot in the sort of standard, typical portrait photographer way. I like to shoot in the landscape orientation. I like to shoot wide and I like to shoot stop down. The reason is because I like to capture more of the scene. I like to get more detail in that shot, sort of create that story and uh, shooting wider allows me to do that. And uh, I just absolutely love the way that the shots look on this camera. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that could have went a lot smoother. So I wanna to talk to you about my last camera and that is my large format system. And that camera is obviously the Intrepid 4x5 Mark IV. And I have two lenses for this camera. I have a Rodenstock 210 f5.6 and the 90 millimeter SA f6.8. I typically reserve any photography that I do with the Intrepid 4x5 for bigger projects. Uh, things that require more detail uh, and a little bit more story to it because it's not a camera to be taken out and just shot willy nilly. Prices for film are expensive. The gear's heavy. It's a lot to work with, with all the movements and things like that. It's just a lot. So I don't take it on general purpose photography or really anything other than a big project that I'm working on. I recently did a video, my one year with the Intrepid 4x5, and uh, it was a mixed bag in terms of comments. A lot of people weren't really sure if they liked it, some people loved it, some people hated it. And uh, I, for one, love it. It's an entry into large format, and uh, I think for what it's worth, it's worth every penny. And ultimately, it's all about the lenses you choose and uh, how you can make those movements work for you and what you're able to capture. There's tons and tons of movements. You guys have seen a lot of my videos on, on this channel because I shoot quite a bit with it. I absolutely love it. The process, the developing, every little aspect of it, I really thoroughly enjoy. And uh, I think it goes a long way in trying to learn that camera and learn large format as a whole before you jump into it. I've seen a lot of people buy it, sell it. I think uh, if you do a little bit of research and you try to understand it a little bit better, you're gonna make the camera work for you. And uh, ultimately, you're gonna have a better time with it. So those are my four film cameras that I own. I am shooting on the X-T4, which I relegate to mainly video and live action sports, mostly professional wrestling. Um, but when it comes to my, my real body of work, I love to shoot film. As you saw, the Olympus OM4 Ti, the Yashica Mat 124G, the Mamiya 645, and the Intrepid 4x5 round out my collection. Excuse me, my voice just cracked. But before I, I figured out that these were my favorite cameras, I had a bit of an obsession. I would go on eBay almost hourly for months on end, trying to find any cool camera, any new lens, anything interesting, even you know some really popular stuff, just trying to find anything that would get me excited about shooting again. And uh, I just kind of didn't figure out what I wanted to do. I didn't figure out my style. I didn't figure out what I wanted to accomplish with my photography. And I think my best advice to anybody who's getting into film photography is to do the same exact thing. Buy a bunch of cameras, buy a bunch of lenses, try out a bunch of different film, shoot as many different things as you can, landscape, street, uh, abandoned stuff. I shoot a lot of abandoned stuff. Shoot professional wrestling, shoot anything that you want that interests you. I just love the cameras that I have. Those are the cameras that I use often and they're the ones that put me in the place that you know, kind of make me feel like I can do anything with my photography. And that's really what's important. Get out and have fun and create some images that you love. So again, let me know what your favorite cameras are. Give me uh, some, some recommendations. I'm happy to try out cameras. And if you want, ooh, this would be pretty sweet. If you have any cool cameras that you wouldn't mind sending my way, or even better, coming out to New England and hanging out with me, showing me your cameras, 
that would be cool. I'd love to collaborate with one of you guys or any of you guys, really. I, I, I love the community. I love the people that comment on my videos. You guys, you guys feel like a family to me. We are kin. And uh, I really appreciate all the kind words and uh, you guys sticking through all my videos because some of them are pretty long-winded, like this one. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. I love this camera. Hey! I love this camera. Blue Jays are fucking annoying. Someone's been fishing my carp spot. I also look like I'm in witness protection. <laughs> my favorite lens that is on here pretty much all the time is this one right here. This is the 55 millimeter F2 point. That noise is really obnoxious. And check some of the, the recently updated uh, listings. <laughs> I can feel that like saliva coming up in my throat and I try, just try to talk. Dead?